Hey everybody and what's up? Welcome back to What's Poppin' in Design where we cover everything that's happened in design over the last week. You might be asking yourself, but what happened with your face, with your beard over the last week? And that is that is a COVID accident. That's what happens when the barber shops are closed and I have to trim my own beard, but I don't remember how to do this. So this this kind of stuff happens, but hopefully it's not gonna stop us from covering everything that happened in design. So let's dive right into it. The first project that I really like this week is Norway has their new password uh, passports designed by the studio called New, and they've done a really, really fantastic job on designing them. Of course, passports are such a com complicated kind of object to design because there is security, it has to be representing the country. It's very, very um, complicated kind of task, but they they went with trying to design uh, or convey the landscape of Norway and kind of like check out these Northern Lights kind of thing here. And I think they did a really, really nice job, nice identity job here also on their portfolio. Check out how nice kind of the art direction of the passport is, how nicely they're presenting their work. I think it's really, really well done. I've actually went ahead to check the website of the studio that itself. And I also really liked how they presented themselves. So we believe in brave choices, strip away everything that is not relevant and build a lasting story. And then when you start moving your mouth, you're actually starting to erase the text. And what happens is some of the words stay and it, you're kind of left with, we believe in a lasting story. So you are actually part of your feeling their agenda of taking away everything that's not a core of the essence. And I feel like it's a really nice way to use web design to tell a story and make the user part of that story. So really, really well, well done portfolio and a nice studio from new, so great project. The second project that I love this week is this new app that Sketch AR. Now we're talking a lot about AR and AR new apps, but this is the first app that I actually saw that has some practical uses. So what this app does is that you're downloading it, you're actually holding it above your paper and kind of gives you helping um, tools and, and tutorials live on that paper while you're actually drawing. And the app is super well designed. They have a really cute onboarding process. They kind of ask you, what do you wanna learn how to draw? And this is really, really cool. I actually think I'm gonna give this to my to my son and see if he can learn to draw using this, this new app. I gave it a shot and the, it was pretty cool for a first experience. So I'm really excited to see how AR kind of integrates within our life and actually has practical practical use cases to help us achieve more using technology. So I really like also the design, the whole experience of this. Go and check this out. Um, this is free, you can use it for free afterwards, it's paid. The next project that I wanna show you is called Phantom Analyzer. So this is basically kind of like a website where you, uh, it, it undercovers all the pixels and, and analytics traffic that um, tracking that most website has on them. Um, for example, if we're gonna put here Flax Academy and we're gonna scan it, you're probably gonna see that we're using, you know, uh, Google Analytics and the Facebook pixel and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, as you can see. now. What's really cool about this, that is, this is actually what's called side project marketing. So as you can see, this was actually created by Fathom Analytics, which is an analytics company started by Paul Jarvis. If you're not familiar with Paul Jarvis, you should definitely check him out. He, he was a designer, now he's an author. He's doing a lot of really cool creative stuff. So he has this company of analytics that are against tracking. And th they've actually created this project as a marketing for their own tool. And I really like this when uh, brands create stuff that is actually useful for some people in order to promote their own app, this is this is what's called side side project marketing, and I really really like this. So you're welcome to check this out. Next thing this week is a new version of Anima. So some of you might know Anima started off as kind of a plugin for Sketch to animate some of the objects, and now they're already in the first fourth iteration of their product. And at this point, what they're actually doing is they're exporting your design from whatever software that you're working with. So whether you're working on you know, XD, Sketch, whatever the logos are. Yeah, so Sketch, Figma, or XD, they're actually going to export your code into, you know, JavaScript, React, all of these other uh, mechanisms. And this is supposed to help 
designers and developers collaborate better together. Now, there have been a lot of companies that have tried to do this in the past. All of the kind of direct expert to code from design software has not worked out well in the past. And I've, I've actually tried to use this new version of Anima, but for some kind of bug, I wasn't able to create a new project and test it on my own. So I don't know, I'm, I'm excited in the way that these things work and, and the way that the industry goes to in combining the design software with the actual code so that you know we don't have to code ourselves, but we can work alongside with the developer and we can take our designs from not just static or prototypes into almost real live products. So I like the direction. Again, wasn't able to actually practically use Anima, but check this out. Maybe you'll have better, better um, results than I did. Um, another cool project that I saw this week is this COVID-19 vaccine tracker. So this is kind of a, you know, one of these very cool articles where you see that the the information and kind of like infographic, interactive infographic. But this is pretty cool for for me for a few reasons. First of all, this was built using Webflow. So this is pretty cool. They've taken Airtable data, connected it to Webflow, and they're pulling on real data um, to create this interactive experience. So this is pretty cool. The other thing, and obviously there's really cool interactions here. And you know, this was meant to educate, uh, educate obviously, but if you look at the beginning, this interactive visualization was made by first person, a design and storytelling company. So as you can see, much like the Fatim Analytics, this is another side project marketing and these the studio or agency uh, company created this because they know COVID is trending right now. A lot of people are looking for information. So they try to build something that will be valuable for a lot of people. But in the meanwhile, they also show their design abilities, their coding ability, and their, their ability to tell a story in a meaningful way. So I really, really like this. And I also like, again, the side project marketing approach. Two last thing for this week is these new ads from IKEA. I really, really like these ads because they show how simple you know, creative concepts can be and how good art direction can just tell a story, right? You don't need pills or creams. You can just have, you know, uh, pillows or blankets to sleep well and then you'll feel better. Um, so this is a really, really creative concept from Ikea, well executed. Well, Ikea is pretty well known for their great advertising. And I think this is just one more example of that great advertising. And the last thing for this week is Apple just announced that they're coming out with 200 more new emojis that are kind of come out this year. I, they, I think they've already released like 100 new emojis this year. And now next year or this year, they're gonna come up with 200 more. And this is really, I think this is interesting because you know, as our communication evolves and emojis become really part of the language that we use, we have to remember that these pictograms, these icons were designed by designers just like you and me, and they have a huge impact on how we as a civilization or a culture communicate with one another. So I think this is just one more testament to the power and the influence that designers have these days. So I leave you with these thoughts. Let me know in the comments below if you saw a cool project this week that you wanna share with us. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Have a great week.